Welcome to the world of the Transgo High Performance Shift Kit. In this video presentation, we'll show you step by step how to beef up your Turbo Hydromatic 400 transmission fast and easy with the Transgo Performance Shift Kit. You'll love it. This transmission is about to come up. installation with the trans still in the vehicle. It will help you install this kit with confidence. While you are watching this video, Stop the tape often and read the instructions. The booklet has the specific instruction. Follow the booklet to the letter through the entire installation. During the installation, finish and review each step before moving on. When installing springs, follow the instruction sheet for customizing options, size, location, and color. When drilling holes, Follow instructions for their location, size, and customizing options. Follow shift customizing options as they apply to your installation. Notice the If Trans is a Part section of page 7. If the trans is a part, these changes will improve durability. These are the typical tools needed to do the installation. First. Let's road test the vehicle to see if the transmission is in good working condition. We just want to make sure it has three forward gears, and reverse. So let's get started. Release the hood latch. Let's raise the hood. Now remove the transmission dipstick. Okay, let's jack the front of the vehicle up like this. Place two stands, one here and one here. Now we can jack up the rear. When you're done, it should look like this. Please use sturdy jack stands. Before we go under the car, let's gather the required tools. We will need a 3 8 speed handle and three sockets, 7 16 one half, and a 3 8 also, we need a long screwdriver, a couple of small screwdrivers, a drain pan, and some wiping rags. Let's make sure you have the transmission that this kit fits. This kit fits all the rear wheel drive 1965 and up GM 400 transmissions. Yes, that even includes the 1987 up type. The bottom pan has 13 bolts holding the pan to the case. Look here on the driver's side. Close to the center area we have an electrical connector, shift linkage, and a line pressure tap here. On the passenger side in the rear we have a governor cover then a vacuum modulator here. There are two cooler line fittings here. This top line is the cooler return to the transmission. And the lower line is to the cooler from the transmission. This is the right transmission. Let's get going. Place a drain pan under the transmission, favoring toward the front. The transmission pan is held on with 13 bolts. If your pan bolts are hidden or too close to the cross member in the rear, you may need to remove the bottom rear mount bolt or bolts to gain access to the rear pan bolts. Pry up on the transmission and insert a socket between the frame and the mount. Now you can get to the bolts. 
With a half inch socket and a speed wrench, remove all the oil pan bolts except for one toward the rear here. If necessary, pry the pan loose, then loosen the last bolt slowly, lower the pan, and let the oil run over the front edge of the pan. Lay the pan and gasket aside for now. Let's keep going. There are two different pans. This deep pan type and this shallow pan type. This shallow pan takes a short pickup tube with a short filter bolt and no spacer. This deep pan takes a long pickup tube with a long filter bolt and a spacer. Let's remove the filter. Have the drain pan in position to catch the fluid that will run out of the filter and valve body. Remove this bolt and lower the filter. If the transmission oil is still hot, protect your hands with a rag. Place the filter, pickup tube, spacer if you have one, and the bolt into the transmission pan. Feel up here in the bore for any O-rings that might not have come down with the pickup tube. On the side of the valve body, find this connector. It goes to the detent solenoid. We need to unhook it. Some models may also have a wire going from this case connector to this switch. If so, disconnect it. To help you reinstall the wires correctly, make a simple drawing of the connectors and the wires. Make sure the drain pan is still in place to catch the fluid that will drain from the valve body and the transmission. Remove these seven bolts with a half inch socket and speed handle. Now remove this detent spring and roller as you remove this last half inch bolt, like this. Notice we still have three smaller bolts left. Change to a 7 16 socket and remove these two bolts here and here. Now loosen this last bolt about one or two turns and let the fluid drain for a minute or two. Remove the bolt while supporting the valve body with the other hand. Pry down on the tubes with a screwdriver like this until they're free from their holes in the case. Lower the valve body. Take a pan bolt and screw it into this hole finger tight. Now remove these two solenoid bolts here and here. Lay the solenoid and the bolts into the pan. Hold the plate and unscrew the short bolt, then lower the plate. There are several check balls above the plate, so be careful not to lose any of them. Don't worry, the video and the instructions will show where they go. Pull down on this pin to remove the intermediate servo parts like this. Keep these parts together and lay them into the pan. Let's go to this servo and remove it. Remove these six bolts from the low reverse servo cover. And lower the cover, gasket, and the servo assembly. Lay these parts in the pan. Let's take these parts to the bench. Lay these parts out and clean them. 
Let's go to page two and read about the special accumulator upgrade. The new 2-3 accumulator system prevents light throttle bang and clang and gets shorter, meaning firmer, with more throttle. At step A, place the valve body on the bench with the 2-3 accumulator piston hanging out over the edge. Now, as shown in B, use a 3 16 punch and knock the 2-3 pin straight down and out of the valve body. Save the E-clip. Clean the bore. The kit furnishes a new piston, threaded pin, spring, and a new E-clip if you happen to lose one. Install the sealing ring onto the new piston and lube the ring. Find the E-clip and install it onto the new pin. Push the pin into the piston until the E-clip bottoms at this end. Now, insert the spring into the pocket of the piston. Use a vise to hold the valve body, or have a buddy hold it for you. Then install the whole assembly into the valve body bore. Use care to align the piston to the bore. Install the nut, and turn it on with your fingers as far as you can. Now use a short wrench and finish tightening the nut until it bottoms the threads. As you make each turn of the nut, check the sealing ring for bind. We don't want to bind the ring on the ridge of the bore. Use a small screwdriver to help push the ring into the bore. Use care not to break or cut the new ring on the piston. Tighten until you feel the pin bottom out in the bore. Leave about one to two threads sticking out from the nut. Then use a chisel to cut the rest off like this. Smack the side of the bolt threads with a hammer like this. The bolt will break just above the nut. It will look like this when you're done. Turn to page three. Make your choice of the shift command feature. This means you have full control of your transmission. It will not upshift in the manual low or manual two position until you move the lever. You got it? The trans will not upshift in the manual one position. This also means the trans will shift back to low at any speed when the one position is selected. If you do not want the back to low at any speed feature, do not install the new 1-2 valve or cup plug. This truck we are working on will be towing heavy loads. We want to be able to hold low descending steep hills. We will install the new 1-2 shift valve and cup plug. Remove this roll pin. Find an old metal coat hanger and make yourself a tool. Like this. Now carefully pry the steel 1-2 shift valve and aluminum sleeve from the board. Lay these parts out in order of removal. This aluminum sleeve contains a valve, a spring, and another small valve. 
Clean the valve body bore and all parts removed. Now blow dry them. The kit furnishes two inner 1-2 shift valves for this location. Find the 1-2 valve that is the same size as the old one. Install the new valve. Push it to the bottom of the bore. Let's assemble this bushing. First, insert this small valve and spring, then this larger valve, this hole inboard. Now push the aluminum sleeve assembly into the valve body. Now install the roll pin. Turn over the valve body and tap this cup plug into the hole until it is flush. Check to see if the 1-2 shift valve will still move freely. Looks good. Page 4 is all about selecting and adjusting the 1-2 shift firmness. The brand, type, and style of second clutch plates have a big effect on the 1-2 shift firmness. Step 1 says to remove the valve or valves and install the blue spring. Let's do that now. First, remove the roll pin. The plug. The spring. The valve. If you have an inner spring, remove it and discard it. Now clean and flush the bore and blow dry. Now install the new blue inner spring. Then the valve with no outer spring. Finally, install the plug. And now the roll pin. Okay, let's clean the entire valve body assembly. Looks good. Let's move on. Read page 5. Find the separator plate and lay it on the bench as shown. This hole here controls the 2-3 shift feel. Choose the range that closest fulfills your needs. Range 2 is what we want for this big dually Suburban. 
it'll be towing heavy loads. Let's drill it now according to range two of the instructions. Oh, we won't drill this hole for range two, so let's move on to the next hole. Look here at these instructions on the accumulator feed hole size. Our preference is range number two. So we need to drill this hole according to the instructions under range number two. Now let's go find the second feed hole. Locate the proper size drill bit and drill the hole according to the instructions under range number two. Let's clean the plate and lay it aside for now. Find the gasket with the VB. Place it on the valve body. Now lay the separator plate onto the gasket and valve body like this. Oil the plate and install the C gasket. Okay, with some Vaseline, stick the check balls to the plate. Here. Here here, here, and here. Your valve body may have had five, six, or seven balls, but we only want these five balls as shown on page six. Don't worry, it's okay. Clean this screen if your trance has one, and install these governor tubes. Make sure the manual valve is in place. Make sure the rear servo is clean. Then lube the low reverse piston seal and these accumulator sealing rings. And insert this second accumulator piston into this bore. Now install the new spring. Place the gasket on the cover and lay the servo assembly into the cover. With these parts clean, lube this ceiling ring Then install the horseshoe clip into this groove and then push it into this seat. Install the spring, now the piston. Lay all these parts into the pan. We're ready to go back under the vehicle to install them. Now install this intermediate servo assembly. Make sure the spring is on the pin. Push it up into the bore like this. Now let's install this low reverse servo assembly like the instruction sheet shows. Push this assembly into the bore Now install the gasket and cover. Start a bolt here. 
and here. Finish installing the rest of the cover bolts. and tighten them evenly. Let's install the separator plate. Make sure the check balls are in place and raise the plate to the case and install a pan bolt here to hold the plate in place. Align the plate and gaskets using these two Z bolts. Install the solenoid and bolts. Now tighten them. Hook up the connector. Now remove the Z-bolts. and this temporary short bolt. Okay, let's install the valve body. Make sure the manual valve is in the valve body and raise the body to the case while aligning these tubes with the holes here in the back of the case. Now, install this bolt here in toward the rear. Make sure the manual lever pin is inserted into the manual valve. Look, this pin has to be in this slot of the manual valve. Now, push up on the valve body and install this 7 16 bolt. Now we can carefully align the valve body to the plate and gaskets. Install the two Z-bolts. Do it like this. Place this Z-bolt through the detent spring and install it. Now install the other Z-bolt here. Make sure the manual valve is free. Tap these pipes up into place with a plastic handle like this. Looks good. Now let's install all the other valve body bolts. Let's be sure to tighten them evenly. And double check each bolt. Install the O-ring onto the suction tube and lube it. Push the tube into the case board. Now the filter can be installed. If you have a deep pan, then your tube will be the long one with the long filter bolt and spacer like this. Place the pan gasket on the pan and lift the pan into place while starting one bolt on this side and one on this side, like this. Finish starting all the bolts in a few turns. Now tighten all the pan bolts with a speed handle evenly double check each bolt. Make sure the vacuum steel tube is in good shape with no cracks or holes. 
Also, check the rubber hose at the modulator. Then go topside and check the rubber connection at the carb or injector. They can get a crack like this. Adjust the gas pedal cable for full stroke. Have a buddy help you with this. Bend the bracket if you do not have full throttle when the gas pedal is floored. Install the air cleaner. Add four quarts of fluid. Start the engine. Now immediately add four more quarts and check the dipstick for full. Look, it is still about a pint low. Let's add and recheck. There we go. It is still a little below full. After it warms up, we'll check it again. While the vehicle is still in the air, hold the brake and run through the gears from park to reverse, neutral, D, second, and now first. Let's move the selector to D and accelerate, checking for upshifts. As it shifts, watch the speedometer change speeds. There's the 1-2 shift and the 2-3 shift. Okay, we can lower the car. Double check the fluid level. It's right here, just below the full mark. After your road test, check it again. Let's road test the vehicle and check its new performance. Start with some light throttle up chips and feel for the one, two, and the two, three shifts. This will tell us if the valve body is working normally. Do we have good, quick, crisp shifts with no delays? Yes, we do. Now, try some up shifts at three-quarter throttle to see how the shifts get firmer with throttle. This one is okay. Let's go have some fun. Yes, this transmission has come alive. This 400 performance shift kit calibration is very versatile. This video kit installation was only one of the calibration examples. The Red Suburban was calibrated using range number two. If you would have calibrated to range four and had a car like this, you could expect this kind of performance. This kit gives you the shift feel you want when you want it. Yes, with the gear command feature, you're in control and it still delivers full automatic shifts in the drive position. This trans has been around since 1965 and fits all these oldies. It fits all these cars and hardworking trucks. It gives each owner performance satisfaction with a vehicle that has longevity.
We enjoyed developing this kit and hope you have as much fun using it as we had making it. We thank you for using Transgo products and look forward to serving you again with any of the other products that you might want or need.